that is pneumothorax so i've already told you at the time of initial chest x ray or e fast examination we are supposed to tell whether there is pneumothorax based on that they would often put in a chest tube having said that uh, how do you recognize it becomes difficult to recognize these on the trauma patients because most of our patients get a chest x ray in a supine position then it's easy to pick up a pneumothorax on a erect you all know how to pick that up on a supine it's not more no more airway in the apex but you need to see at a lucency a generalized lucency in one part of the lung more so in the lower parts more so in the medial part of the lung in the paracardiac location and that's how you try and pick up your eyes need to be trained to pick up a pneumothorax on a supine x ray of course this uh, uh, gets aided by a extended fast which we are itself doing at the bedside itself you can look at other signs also sometimes a pneumothorax will lead to uh, mediastinal displacement it will lead to either flattening of the diaphragm or even inversion of the diaphragm or a deep sulcus sign or these are signs even seen on supine x-ray to pick up pneumothorax and but once it reaches the ct scan we all know it's easy to pick up pneumothorax and most of the times we have a icd in c2 before the patient reaches but sometimes when you detect a pneumothorax on ct which is like a very small amount of pneumothorax which may not have been picked up either in the e fast or in the chest x ray earlier and now you pick up a pneumothorax by definition it becomes a occult pneumothorax because you've not picked up earlier but you're picking it up on ct scan is this significant does it require management would the surgeons put in a chest tube not exactly in every case there are some clinical criteria to put in a icd in these patients one of them being either the patient is getting symptomatic because of this or the volume of pneumothorax occupies more than 20 percent of the entire lung volume more than these two what we are important and we play in a role is if you pick up a minimal pneumothorax also you will pick up only if you are trying to look for it and the medial most non-dependent part in a supine patient on a CT scan of the chest. Once you pick this up, if the patient is likely to be having a positive pressure ventilation, so either he is already intubated because of maybe associated head injury or he is likely to get wheeled in into the OT for some other injury which he requires an operation, maybe a peripheral injury or something then this mild or minimal pneumothorax can easily expand because of positive pressure ventilation. So therefore, we need to pick this up on a CT scan and report it even if it is a very minimal amount of pneumothorax. That's how I want. Sometimes it's like an open pneumothorax. So you, you can tell the cause of pneumothorax also. Most often, the cause of pneumothorax is alveolar injury. So because of the sharing injury of the lung or a direct impact on the lung, there is alveolar rupture. Alveolar rupture occurs, the air leaks out into the interstitium with a constant breathing in and out. There is a Maclean effect through which the air goes along the interstices. And if there is a pleural bleach which has occurred, it leaks out into the pleural cavity and forms a pneumothorax. So most often you will not find any either rib jetting in to cause a pneumothorax or a tracheobronchial injury to cause but most often it is a lung injury which leads on to a pneumothorax. Having said that in some scenarios you will find external injuries also like multiple rib fractures, ribs jutting in inside and leading on to a lung injury which is the cause for pneumothorax. If it is if there is an external injury also associated, it's known as an open pneumothorax and that we need to detect because open pneumothorax requires, although it will be clinically evident also, patients may have gross injury that's clinically evident, you can pick them up with a completely open wound type and you can detect them, but sometimes it's more like subtle. What is important is in management point of view, if there is an open pneumothorax, the they would like to do a closure uh, dressing over it because it is sucking in air from the environment also and the pneumothorax can potentially increase it. It will not resolve on its own. What is important is the concept of a three-way occlusive dressing. It's a clinical thing, but if we work in the setting of trauma, the trauma radiologist is an integral part of the trauma team who's managing the patient. Therefore, we also need to know all these things what are changing in the management. A three-way occlusive dressing is put so that if you completely close it, it will turn into a tension pneumothorax. You have to have it allowing in the inspiration, it will close, but only in the expiration, the lung air can go out. That's what is important for an open pneumothorax. If not, 
or generally otherwise also the pneumothorax may extend into form a tension pneumothorax that's a life threatening situation again if a icd is put at the time of the injury or at the time when the primary primarily evaluation is being done ideally such scenarios should not arise at all that the patient has a tension pneumothorax but if at all the patient reaches a ct scan and you find or detect a tension pneumothorax this is life threatening this is not the time to write in the report but this is a time to talk to the surgeon phone not even a single report and ask them that there is a tension pneumothorax which is happening ideally it should be detected clinically also how do you detect it radiologically of course a large amount of pneumothorax with significant mediastinal shift with actually rib space widening with not just a depressed diaphragm but a inverted almost type of a diaphragm and a collapsed lung lying in the center these are all signs that this is a kind of a tension pneumothorax of course you have clinical signs of a raised igp pressure also which helps so once you detect this either you talk to the surgeons immediately make sure or you should also be as because we are doctors ourselves be capable of handling the emergency procedure for a tension pneumothorax which is a needle decompression with a wild bore cannula at an upper intercostal space at least we should be able to do it it is not the definitive treatment for a pneumothorax it is a time buying treatment before a proper icd is put into place so a needle thoracostomy followed by a chest tube decompression is the treatment for a tension pneumothorax